What's going on out here? It's harvest time. What up, kid? Say hi to Facebook, uh, YouTube. You know, I, I, I think of the images of those people at that rave party and they're just sitting there dancing and carrying on and all is well with them too. Literally as, as militant paragliders are flying through the sky, they were dancing right up to the end. And then the rest of that story, you know, is all too gruesome and all too heartbreaking because they had no idea up to the last moment, the paragliders landing literally with, within hundreds of feet from them. I'm just saying when we see the perplexities of nations and when we see wars and rumors of wars that should perk our ears up that should get us thinking and listening and it should get us ready we need to be about our harvest whatever you've got in the garden go get it harvested whatever you can go buy at the store get her done welcome back to the homestead so here i am doing a photo op me and jelly we've actually been inside of the remodel this whole time and the girls were actually out doing all of the harvesting of our Asian pears. So we're just here to take the glory, aren't we, Jelly? Sure. I'm just kidding. The whole family's busy today. We're right in the middle of a remodel, but this video is about the importance of the harvest. You know, at the end of a season, we're all just tired. We're even ready for snowfall, to just snow on the garden so we, you know, we can make it end. We've done a million peaches, everyone's done their tomatoes, uh, and then now there's still apples to pick. So this video is a video of don't let up. There is so much going on in the world right now, and trust me, we need to preserve as much of our own food as we can. First of all, we tell God thanks for the harvest. And second of all, we're laying up in store, baby. All right, the long awaited day has come where we're given the, the greenhouse its first haircut because this is going first. into our first, well, pretty much its first winter haircut. Oh. So we have all of the shade canopy from the summer and uh, going into winter. I mean, we've just got some regular pruning to do anyway. Uh, for example, like these cabbages that we've already harvested and uh, then we just cut them and <laughs> we just left them. So we're just doing a lot of things like that. Look right over here, you've got our uh, celery. So we let that go to seed. We've sprinkled some over here that we can hopefully have a massive celery garden. Wouldn't that be awesome? So the greenhouse is looking a little bit too green. So we actually have got to go through this whole thing and start doing some pruning. And it's so hard because it just looks so good, but it's necessary. So that's what we're doing today. Okay, we're also lifting up all of our tomatoes and uh, getting them up and off the ground. So, oh, you can probably go up so on that one. Yeah. No, no, I think that's good because it's temporary. I just put those up and clump them over there. From this side, yep. go in and go back out. All right, check these apples out. I believe these ones are Jonathan's. We have a map of what all of our fruit trees are. So they're either Jonathan's or Jonathan Gold's. Look at that though. Pretty sure that's Jonathan Gold. Whatever it is, that one and this one are our favorites. As well as just the plain old Look at that. Golden delicious over here. Super good. Okay, I'm just out here putting the greenhouse to bed, uh, which is just simply shutting the doors and the windows because the insulated curtain is down. But I wanted to tie in this thread of this harvest that we're doing. And in this upcoming video that you're watching, you know, I'm gonna show you us giving the greenhouse its winter haircut, which is completed. That was on Monday. Um, but you know, a while ago, I was looking at all of our fruit and I was upside down in my rentals and I just had no time, but I knew that we needed to absolutely do our harvest, that we needed to persevere and get it done. And I don't know how I was gonna do it. And you know what happened? My wife just, ah, she is the worker of this homestead and she just stepped up, harvested all of our fruit trees. Um, we've got, 
loads of stuff in our our, our freezers pre-frozen ready for the freeze dryer we're just getting ready to go um, and start cutting up apples the good thing with our apples is we do have a root cellar which is uh, moi uh, has moisture it's it's humid and so we're going to be able to put a lot of those apples just setting uh, in crates until we can cut them up and pre-freeze them and freeze dry them. And so, you know, with everything going on in Israel right now, I'm just more than, uh, more than ever, am I, uh, is it resting upon me to just hunker down and get this work done? Don't let up, you know, you, th what they're going through right now seems absolutely biblical. Do you like that apple, Keisha? Show me. Look how big that is. Just saying. Okay, do you want to just finish that one? All right, I want to show you this. Every time we mow the lawn, <laughs> look what we get. We get a little audience over here. Splash and Shasta knows what that means. Because we use our lawn clippings, we sometimes we'll dry them out and put them on the lawn or on the trampoline, and then other times we just bring them right to the cow. I want to show you how excited they get. Show us what those cows want. Did you hear them over here mooing at you, bud? <laughs> Did you get some all over there, Mr. Splashta? That right there is free food. Bryce, we go park it over there, buddy. Thank you. What do you think, girls? Do you like it? Free food. They still need to have alfalfa to give them enough of the nutrients they need to make the delicious milk but they love the grass. It's a great way to do it. All right, now back to the greenhouse. We've been in there literally all day long. And I mean, I've had a few little projects uh, I've had to do, but I've spent at least four hours there today. It's been awesome, it's looking great. You know, I come from a tradition that you are not only supposed to teach each other the doctrine, but you're supposed to learn of the wars and perplexities of nations. That's something that we've been taught here in a Utah setting our whole lives. But I still feel like too many people around me are lulled away into a false security. They think all is well. And, you know, they're just not watching and praying always. There are a lot of people around us that are asleep. It's not just Utah. It's everywhere. A lot of people don't want to see these scary headlines. And I'm like, my word. You know, I, I, I think of the images of those people at that rave party and they're just sitting there dancing and carrying on and all is well with them too. Literally as, as militant paragliders are flying through the sky, they were dancing right up to the end. When we see the perplexities of nations and when we see wars and rumors of wars, that should perk our ears up. That should get us thinking and listening and it should get us ready. We need to be about our harvest. Whatever you've got in the garden, go get it harvested. Whatever you can go buy at the store, get her done. Whatever you can do to protect your family, you know what that means. I can't really say it on this channel because I want the channel to grow. But whatever God is putting on your heart, you better get it done. All right. This is the night scene in the greenhouse. Isn't it awesome? Oh, it's so rewarding when you get done with big projects like this. Um, oh, my passion fruit went, the blossom went up for the day. 
it's so rewarding when you get down with a big project like this and then you're just walking through and just kind of admiring hard work. I think God likes effort. That's the message, folks. Get her done, get her done, get her done, or get started. Okay, Becca's on the phone with our missionaries. Kason, say hi real quick. Our elder Christensen, say hi. Say what up, Homestead? Lagging, but what's up? <laughs> All right. Becca's going to video me because here's the deal. We have uh, frogs that, that take care of the slugs, and we have finches that take care of the aphids. But this side of the greenhouse has a massive fly problem. Oh, yeah. Ghostbusters. Watch this. It, it's going to work. Maybe okay, not really over here. Wait for it. I think that's why there's not as many. I think it worked. I'm seeing some of them. Wait, you're ruining my video. Lie to them. Where, where are they at? Oh, yeah, it's really good. <laughs> Where's it at? Oh, oh wow. You see, that? you see that? Look at them. Careful with them. I'm talking about regular flies. Maybe one last thought about Israel. If Hezbollah truly gets involved from the north coming down, um, I was watching a Jewish rabbi, and he said at that point, in his opinion, this would be biblical. And, you know, Hezbollah basically was telling Israel that if they got involved uh, with Gaza, that, that they would get involved. Um, so if Israel uh, responded with Gaza, then Hezbollah would, would respond to Israel. And that's what happened yesterday. Netanyahu announced that uh, there was going to be a total shutdown of the food, electricity, water systems in Gaza. I mean, this thing just keeps on escalating in massive and I would say biblical ways. I don't know how to translate this any more clear to you and your house and your homestead, but I'm telling you, all of these things matter. The wars and perplexities of other nations absolutely have and will affect you. By the way, there was another skirmish in Nord Stream, the pipeline today. What do you think that's gonna to do to gas prices? Do you guys use diesel and gasoline? I know I do. Life is pretty good when those things are in abundant abundance. And when they go up, things get a little bit more expensive. And guys, it's already pretty expensive. So keep prepping. Get her done. Prepping is a fantastic way to curb inflation. Just saying. And remember, if you're prepared, you shall not fear. And you'll have less anxiety on the other end of prepping than you might right now thinking about all these scary things that are happening. If you're standing still or if you're running in place, stop, get to work. You're going to feel better. Breathe in, breathe out, do little bits at a time. By small and simple means, you're going to do great things on your homesteads. You, it can't be my plan for you. It's got to be what you're supposed to do. Get on it. Okay, Bryce, I did it. Now let me out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let me out, you idiot. I'll take the camera and let me out. Let me out, Bryce. You're not an idiot. You're my beautiful son. Gosh, kid. I swear. Not funny.
savage. I think it worked. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> entertaining. <laughs> Here you go, you have to push that. But take a look at the thin job, the haircut. See, that's just one of several bucket loads that we've taken out and tropic veil looks amazing look at the banana and the passion fruit here let's find you a passion fruit flower if you're lucky you're gonna see one. Oh, you are lucky come on gotta admit beautiful look at the peppers my friends can you see them I can see them. They're the same color, but they're everywhere. And they're everywhere, 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 everywhere. This greenhouse grows peppers, baby. No big deal. No big deal, no big deal. 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 Oh, even little peppers. Yay. One for the whole family. Okay, yeah, I've been working in the greenhouse all day. It's making me a little weird. So what? Um, oh, I want to show you these beans. Have you guys ever seen these beans that are like, seriously, that's like two feet long? These kind are nasty, but they're really fun to grow. We have some friends that brought us a different variety that also grow long and are supposed to be delicious. So we shall see. And by the way, these cherry tomatoes, these, uh, I don't know what color that would be considered. Orange, not yellow, but they're delicious. So yeah, we trimmed that up. Look at that. Is that fun? Before you kind of got knocked out when you walked through here. So we have a bunch of guests coming on Friday and we thought, you know what? We probably better trim up the greenhouse just a little bit. And so we have been. All right. Oh, and Becca told me that the blackberries were starting to bud again. I don't see it, but that's what she told me. All right, there's your update. By the way, have you seen my baby finches? Some of those are babies. They're seriously so cool. That's that dad right there. Look how pretty. It's funny, the little babies just sit there and run into the walls. They can't hardly fly. Look at that dragon fruit. So it's gonna finally get full sun again. And so I don't think it should be that wiry, that thin. I think that's a product of it being in the shade. But you know what? We're experimenting. We have two dragon fruit on this side and they're, they're fatter. This one's been in shade, but now it's gonna be in full sun for probably the next five months. We'll see. I don't know. It's kind of cool because we have art, uh, artichokes that are starting to go on this side where this side just got spent. And then the same thing over here, we've had tomatoes, but now we're having the tomatoes on this side getting ready to start uh, budding again. Well, see what I mean? 
So we're trying to create our food forest on both sides, both climates in the greenhouse. So far, I think we're learning a lot of cool stuff. <laughs> 